Okay, Ace of Swords in reverse. Is there some truth that's being revealed to you that you're trying not to see or that you're not ready to see? This is really interesting with two of coins and page and um, page of coins looking at one another. Okay, really some themes about balance, Libra, which is really what you are about in general. I'm seeing temperance, which can often, I'm reading this as compromise. I'm seeing the need to compromise on something. Um, and this is two of coins, which is about balance and flexibility. So I'm really seeing flexibility, especially regarding money or tangible matters, things that have to do with practicality, budget, functioning, logistics, all that earth energy. There may be something that you know internally, but that you're not ready to admit to yourself. This is Ace of Swords, which is a new beginning, a new thought, a new revelation. It's usually clarity and truth. Ace of Swords is usually the beginning of a new thought, a new way of thinking that cuts through to the heart of the matter. It clears out all the noise, all the extraneous things, all the haziness, any confusion. Ace of Swords is the card of um, triumphant clarity. It's the Excalibur sword and it represents the truth, truth with a capital T. And it's usually the truth that will set you free. Um, and when this shows up, it, it represents being in alignment with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, clarity, revelation. In the reverse, it, it says that you know something or a truth is available to you, but you're trying not to hear it. You're trying not to see it. You're not ready to let that truth in. When I see Ace of Swords, I always think of the phrase, I'm trying not to hear that. I'm trying not to see that. What is it, Libra, that maybe you're not ready to see or that maybe maybe you're ready to see one side of it but you're not ready to see the other side of it this is two of coins which means balance see, being flexible being adaptive adapting to changing circumstances rolling with things and page of coins really likes to have things planned out ahead page of coins is all about you know budgeting um doing the work being willing to show up to do the work and Two of Coins is about being flexible. You know, sometimes this is joint finances. And I really see with both Two of Coins and Temperance here, seeing things from both sides, being willing to compromise, you know, being willing to see someone else's truth as well as your own. So I see with Page of Coins a willingness to do the work. And I am seeing a need for willingness to show up, to do the work, to... Put, up, put the effort in is really what Page of Coins says, but also a willingness to be flexible and adaptable. And that's also temperance. Temperance finds the middle road, the middle path, what, what two hearts combine to, to create this one liquid, this one fluid. That's what this triangle on temperance's chest is about, is creating a third stable way from the combining of two forces. Often in this card we see the roses and the lilies combined, or blood and water, blood and, and milk. It's really combining of two opposite forces to create a third thing. And it's, it's a, a real card of peace and harmony and stability. So you Librans do find stability in balance and equilibrium. It's really part of your character and your personality. And... It may require, at the end of January here, a willingness, page of coins, to put in the work and be flexible and adaptable, especially as regards to logistics, practicality, money, things that have to do with your values, all of that. That's what I'm really seeing. And that, that will be a feather in your cap. It's really interesting how these both have the um, same red hat here with a feather. I'm almost seeing like a painter here or someone who's just using what they have in their hands and being willing to put the work in and finding balance with it. So I see good things for you. Both Temperance and Ace of Swords are very good cards. And it's just a matter of finding the balance in all the logistics, uh, being willing to be flexible and adaptable to what's in front of you and being willing to put the hard work in. Let's see what's coming up as we approach into February for you, Libra. We've got some air signs, some sword stuff going on. Interesting, some 
five and seven energy, and then the hermit in reverse. So as we turn from January to February, um, five of swords and seven of swords aren't the easiest energies. It means like someone trying to get, get ahead by any means necessary. This card is often called uh, open dishonor, and this card is called hidden dishonor. So it can mean like doing doing someone is around you or this is your energy where they're doing whatever it takes to get ahead um, and they're not caring about how it affects you. Five of Swords, I usually call picking up the pieces, which means looking at the, a battlefield that has occurred already and collecting the insights that are left on the battlefield. So when I see this in reverse, I'm wondering, Libra, what is it that you could still collect from any past conflict? Are there swords and remnants and spoils left out on a battlefield of an old conflict that you have yet to collect? When I see this card, swords represent air, which is your element, Libra, and swords represent knowledge, wisdom, insight, clarity. I'm really seeing this as as related to this because this is a sword in reverse as well. And what it's telling me is that there is a crucial or a critical insight that is available to you that you're not seeing or that you're not um, processing, that you're not collecting, that could be very beneficial. So I'd like you to, to consider towards the end of January to look onto your past and look at like some areas that may have been of conflict and see, okay, well, what do I know now? What are the seeds of wisdom and insight? What are the figurative swords that are still laying out on that battlefield that I can collect that provide me with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, clarity, this new aha moment that I can take with me forward to, pre you know, to uh, present me with balance and clarity and flexibility, especially in the things that I'm doing and the things that I have at my disposal, the things that I own, that's that's really like a gift that's sitting there waiting for you. It looks like maybe a bad thing or a difficult thing, but there are, you know, I, I sometimes look at this card as a card of silver linings in a dark cloud. Even if there was someone who was behaving selfishly or not caring or, you know, I sometimes see this as the Clint Eastwood fistful of dollars, like he's just going to make out like a bandit at, at others' expense. But in the realm of, of conflict and battle, there's usually, you know, those swords are left out on the battlefield. There's, there's knowledge and wisdom and insight to be gained if you go over that battlefield. And this just in reverse tells me that maybe you haven't collected all the pieces, you haven't picked up all the pieces that are available to you that can give you really great insight and clarity. Um, and then I also see the Seven of Swords guy in reverse. So this this usually means hidden dishonor. Someone trying to get away with something. Someone being very uh, me, me, me centered, cutting corners, feeling like uh, the ends justify the means. It's really like a fear-based and a, a lack-based card. So I'm going to invite you to transform this energy into this energy, which is self-assertion. This, this is somebody, I just want to contrast these two different cards. These are both sevens. This is seven of swords, seven of air, and this is seven of wands, which is seven of fire. The seven of swords personality, these are like two different aspects of, or, or two different opportunities of the same person. This is someone who... Um, believes that things are scarce, that they're not going to be able to cover their bases, that they have to steal from others in order to gain um, what they need, that they have to cover, you know, look out for number one and cover themselves because there's just not enough to go around. It's really that kind of energy. Whereas this person stands up for what they believe and they say, no, I know this is mine. I'm willing to fight for this openly. This person does it in like a hidden um, you know, criminal or what's the word I'm looking for? I'm, I'm getting the word rapscallion, but that's not quite a renegade. You know, this, this is a great risk taking card. And sometimes this card is called putting 
uh, your head in the tiger's mouth. It's really like a gambler card, gambling type energy. Like, I'm going to take this risk and I'm going to go for this no matter what the consequences are, you know? It's sort of like Grand Theft Auto. It's like, I don't care what the consequences are. I'm just going to do this because it's like risk versus reward card. Whereas this card is much stronger, much more courageous. It's saying, I'm willing to stand up and fight for what I believe in. I'm willing to assert myself at any cost. But it's taking a positive stance. Instead of like acting like a mouse and trying to get away with what you can but underneath the scenes and underneath the surface, this one is saying, I'm courageous. I'm in an advantageous position. Even sometimes this card is called uh, success despite adversity. And what it means is that even, even within challenges, it's not running away from something. It's standing up to it and saying, this is what I believe. I'm courageous. I'm self-asserting. I am going to openly declare that this is worth fighting for. And therefore, you become a leader to others. Or if, you, if these others are challenging you and, and in conflict with you, you have the upper hand. You have the upper position. So what I'm seeing, interestingly, Libra, with this, with this card kind of head to head with this card, and sevens are spiritual numbers. So it's sort of like a spiritual choice. Do I want to run away or do I want to stand up for what I believe in? I really see this as like asserting going underground or standing up at the top of the hill. Like, are you going to just kind of take what you can get or what's offered to you or... Or are you going to stand up and say, this is mine? You know, this is what I believe in. This is what I believe to be true. Even if it means you standing on your own. Because Hermit in reverse is the isolationist. He's looking for the truth. Um, but there could be fears of being by yourself when this shows up. Especially if this it's surrounding this, which might imply that if you kind of are afraid of asserting yourself because of what it might lead to. You're afraid of that it might make you um, on your own, that it might make you feel isolated. So I'm gonna encourage you, Libra, with these, these are these are challenging energies, Five of Swords and Seven of Swords. It really, you know, what's going on in both of those is there's some sort of dishonor. There's some sort of someone not caring, someone just caring about themselves is really a theme in both of these. Now, whether that's you or someone else, I'm going to encourage you to stand up for what it is that you think and believe because there's insights that are available to you by doing that. And particularly as you reflect upon past conflicts or an old battleground, look for the swords of insight, the ideas, the thoughts, the wisdom that may just be laying out on the field from past conflicts that is available to you as a revelation, as an aha moment, as the truth that cuts through everything, that gives you clarity, because it's really going to help you with all the strength that you have, standing up for yourself, finding the middle ground, finding the balance, being flexible and adaptable, being willing to put in the work and the effort. Don't, don't allow fears of you being on your own, not wanting to see the truth. That's what's going on in both of these cards here. Um, don't let that stymie you because there's a chance that you might feel ripped off if you allow that to happen. But I don't see that happening. I see you standing up for what you believe in. It's just going to be sort of a spiritual choice here of whether you're going to allow yourself to feel ripped off or whether you're going to say, no, I'm standing up for this. I'm fighting for this. I'm asserting myself. Um, that's what's going on in the cards here. And then we also have Judgment in Reverse, another major arcana, usually having to do with forgiveness. It might be hard for you to forgive someone or move on from the past. It's also related. To, it's really interesting with these three cards. There's some theme of... And this may have to do with the air sign person, um, Libra, Aquarius, you know, another, this could be you, Libra, in reverse, or it could be an Aquarius or a Gemini, but gosh, this is really interesting. You could be having a hard time forgiving yourself about something or forgiving another air sign person or someone who fits a king of swords archetype. This is usually someone who is like a professor or a lawyer or someone who is very sharp and keen-witted, 
has has a relationship with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, someone who's very educated. So you may be having a hard time forgiving someone like that, uh, especially as it re reflects them or you having uh, very me, me, me behavior, looking out for themselves. And I see that there is, a, there may be a trust issue or there may be a, a way in which you're not fully allowing yourself to look at the truth. What's really going to help you in this situation, Libra, and maybe turn you back right side up if this is you, is employing forgiveness, letting go of the past. There's real insight and wisdom with looking at the past and seeing what is available from that. I know I've said this probably like three times already in this reading, but the, the Ace of Swords is really... It's a new beginning. All aces are new beginnings. And this is a new realization. It's really, I always say with this card, the truth will set you free. And this is a real aha moment. And it can really take you forward. This trumpet here in um, judgment represents the spiritual fire of forgiveness that burns away all the stories of the old. The old and the dead. This is old karma. Old family issues. You know, these people are dead and gone. So it can be old family karma, old family baggage, old stories. This is letting that go and, and receiving new life through this insight that I really see you collecting and gaining from reflecting upon old conflicts from the past. I'm really seeing a lot of these old people here who are gray, old stories. This is new, fresh energy, Libra. And I'm going to say, let this in. The fact that it's in reverse tells me either you're not seeing it or that you don't have it or that you're not believing in it, that's really actually what I'm getting the most, that it's a beginning of a new, fresh beginning, because it's really there. And it's really going to make you supple and flexible and adaptable. It's going to give you a lot of balance, Libra. So look into that, especially if it's having to do with forgiving someone who may have been self-centered or another air sign or someone who fits the archetype of King of Swords really going to serve you. Let's see what else comes up. Yeah, Queen of Swords, that's you, Libra, for sure. And especially if you're in a relationship with two air signs, um, this has to do with you speaking your truth, being willing to put in the effort, being willing to stand up for what you believe in, being willing to use your words to define your boundaries. That's what she's about. She's really clear in her thinking and her speech. This is someone who doesn't mince words. She's like, I know what I mean. I say what I mean. I can be very direct. I can be cutting if necessary, but I'm super clear and I'm super, uh, you know where you stand at all moments with me because I say exactly what I mean. And therefore she lives in this garden of roses because I think it was Mahatma Gandhi who said, uh, peace is when our thoughts and our actions and our words all match. She embodies that. So standing up for what you believe in, Libra, really important. Using forgiveness. I'm seeing a head-to-head -head battle with an air sign and you, Libra. Or it could be with someone who fits the archetype of King of Swords. You know, there's a, a battle of authority here. But... What I'm also seeing is that forgiveness, even if you're having a hard time releasing ghosts of the past or old baggage or old karma, if someone has been self-centered, that's what's surrounding this, forgiveness. You may have to speak your mind, but also realize that there's a new... Wisdom, insight, beginning, clarity, truth, revelation that's going to set you free from this. And it's really almost like digging through the past and seeing, well, what, what did I learn from that old battle? It's real, You've come to a place of great authority over yourself and power and strength and clarity. You know, s say it, speak it. And really, if you're having difficulty moving on from the past or moving on with forgiveness, Look at what's going on here. Collect those swords that are sitting out on the battlefield. Um, King of coins in reverse has to do with, again, authority. 
there's two kings surround whether you're male or female Libra there's two kings surrounding you here I'm really reading you as this upright queen um, which is battle of authority it may be that older people in your family the elders you know this could be a husband a lover a wife a parent someone in authority positions that is are challenging your authority but you're really clear and you're upright and you're saying, you know, I am in alignment with the truth. By the end of the month, this sinks in. You receive that truth and you embody it because you're carrying it. So whatever it is in the beginning of the month that seems to want to be coming in, and I, a new idea, a new thought, by the end of the month, you get it. And you stand really strong and really clear with it, um, standing up for what you believe in, even if... People who are normally reliable with these kings are not acting like that. You know, this is king of coins, king of the resources. This is the king of thought, uh, king of swords. But you you know where you're at by the middle of, of February. And I just want you to embody queen of swords and speak really clearly and defend your boundaries. That's what this is all about. Stand up for what you believe in. I encourage you to allow your thoughts, your actions, and your words to all be in alignment. Because that's, that's also where this temperance comes in, this balance, this peace, this harmony. And there may be some soul searching you need to do to forgive either yourself or someone else. I'm seeing another another air sign or earth sign. So, and, and by the beginning of that new moon in Aquarius in your fifth house, Libra, middle of February, right on time for Valentine's Day, you know, there's new love or new beginning in terms of a love relationship. So if you're relating to this or this, it's a really good time to sort of clear out the old clutter of the past in order to make room for something new, this new beginning.